Welcome to Tessera's Neon Nights. We're here with FaZe again. You have yeah, been in so I'm... many videos. <laughs> There's always the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't. And neither are my opinions. We're doing a Q&A um... for the first episode of Neon Nights. And uh, this is going to go on both of our channels. Correct. Uh, so long as neither of our video recordings screw up. Um, if you Hopefully. guys, If you guys don't know what Neon Nights is, it's basically just like chat interaction or podcasts but at night and with a bit more flair to them more stuff going on which i'll experiment with as this series progresses but yeah q a you've been wanting to do this for how long now it's, i think it's actually it might have been when i hit 40 i think i did film one on my channel when i did 40 subscribers and is it a 30 or 40 and i'm like oh i want to do one for 100 but I haven't had a setup decent enough to actually do one. Yeah. And uh, now I kind of do. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, so we got a big list of questions here. And I'm going to be reading them off to you. I am your pawn reading of the questions from the predetermined list. I have the Holy Scripture here. The Ten Commandments of Foam Dart Blasting. And we're going to be going over these one at a time. So, should I just get started then? Uh, yeah, beforehand I did want to say though, these guys, uh, these guys, these questions were sent into by you guys, the viewers. Uh, so thank you guys for sending in your questions and yep. asking stuff. I, I love doing stuff like this, it's fun for me, so I enjoy it, and let's just get on into it. Alrighty, so question number one, why the hat? <laughs> why do you have the hat in your videos? <laughs> um... Oh, that is a good question. The hat has kind of just been a part of me for a pretty long time. Uh, this isn't actually the original one. The original one's like 10 years old. Um, this is the newer one. And my dad got on a trip and I just kind of was like, I started wearing it one day, it just kind of became a thing. And I, my my intro be, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't in either of my opinions. That was, I came up with that on the spot. That I was not. When, when you came here, you told me that you just ad libbed that the first time and it just worked. So you kept it. And honestly, that's how. Exactly. That's probably how the best intros on YouTube are made. It's just like you say something off the top of your noggin, and if it sticks, then it just happens to stick. And if it doesn't, then you keep experimenting until something does stick. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, but yeah, that's that's why the hat and. Uh... <laughs> That makes sense. We do have a lot of questions here, so I say we just continue forward. Uh, if that's all you want to say, unless you want to add anything else. I've got nothing else to add to that. I mean, Question there's too much to it. How to get in touch with you? Um, what? <laughs> how to get in touch with you? That's what it says on here. Like, how would somebody be able to contact you if they wanted to like? tell you something or ask a question or give suggestions or something like that i can't tell if you added this in or if this is a real question this is there. a real question this was on the list <laughs> ask my friend if that was sent in by email because i'm gonna laugh at it if it is um i have an email in my about me section on um, with that i have my discord username so if you want to add me on discord or if you want to contact me by email for business inquiries, whatever it might be, comments, questions, concerns, whatever you want to ask me, um, go on ahead. Just don't spam me 2,000 messages or anything like that because yeah, that bugged the crap out of me. Um, but yeah, you do that. Those are two really easy ways to reach me. Emails I'm not as up to date with, um, or as I don't look at emails as often as I do Discord because I use Discord more than I use my email. So makes sense to me. Um, some of these questions are very similar, so I've added a couple things to them to make them more different and just like so that you're not saying the same thing over and over again. And also, these are all the questions that were sent in through the emails. I added one question at the very end of the list, so that's that's it. Okay. So just okay. let me you know. Number three. This one's amazing. Will you do more angry reviews? <laughs> like <laughs> full out. I know what they're I know what they're talking about. Um 
Will I do more angry reviews? The one shot was kind of just an experimental video. I really wasn't expecting it to do that much. Uh, or that many views and have that kind of a reaction to it. Not just that, mainly because that video was more like a collab that I could put in my video and then you posted on your channel as well. It, it just was. Pissed. It was so funny. Oh my gosh. Um, I honestly, I, I like your angry reviews because it shows like the passionate side about how stupid Nerf has become. And it's like so few people are willing to actually like come forward and talk from their heart about how bad the actual nerf company has become up to this point it's like all just like oh yeah this blaster is mediocre but eh, it'll work you're like no mediocre is no longer good enough <laughs> i so i still have my one shot shown pieces i did not even take the time to reassemble the sprint in it is actually gone i used it for a modification um That's not but good. i was just that day, I was, I had a lot of things going on that day, and what a lot of people don't know is that this was Jim that we pissed off. Yeah. I was partial, like, a very small percentage of it was acting, a large percent of it was, I was actually annoyed because I paid $60 for a damn thing, and um, that was back when I didn't have a job, and $60 when you don't have a job is a lot, especially when you're a younger yeah. kid. I, I, and, I, I uh, feel that personally. The only reason I ended up getting my icon long shot was because, like, we were at Target and they didn't have anything interesting, and I didn't know any better. I saw a new long shot and I said, this is my chance, I'm gonna get a long shot. Little did I know that it was butchered and basically unmoddable without doing mods to the shell itself. What a waste of frickin' time. But, like, I feel like more reviews where you could show that would be... A review on the Warden, or a review on the Phoenix, or a review on the Turbine, or a review on pretty much any modern day Nerf Blaster. Like, pretty much yeah. all of them, minus a couple, like, Diamonds in the Rough, are just bad. They're just yeah. pathetic and pointless. And, oh yeah, no. Like, people have started realizing that. Nerf has started padding out the number of Blasters that they have per release. Think about the Fortnite Blue Shock. There are two identical versions of that blaster released at the same time for the same price because they knew for a fact that nobody would want them except for collector's purposes so that they hoped they could get double the money off of the people who are trying to collect them by selling two blasters at once. It's just... It's acidine. Um, but yeah, that's basically all. I, I do plan on doing more. I have a few plans. My thing is I have to get the blasters, and that's money. And then for me to review, my review process is usually a week to maybe a week and a half. Yeah. Um, I can actually condense it down to two days if I really need to, but I like to take my time with reviews. Yeah. I usually take my Excuse time me? testing blasters instead of just trying to rush the testing procedure. Because, like, there have been times where I've rushed the testing procedure and do it in one day. Like, when we did it with the swordfish, that was pretty rushed. Um, usually, I take, like, a, a full day to just dedicate to the testing procedure. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, our next question is... Will you be doing more reviews per month? And what I mean by that is, like, you do a video a month give or take yeah do you plan on adding uh adding more reviews like for the same amount of time like doing a video every two weeks or a video a week or god forbid you decide to do two videos a week i feel sorry for you you would have to live in the same pit that i live in but that's basically what i'm asking um so and this is where a lot of people get a little bit of a look into my personal life i work full-time i work a full-time job this is a side hobby making content for you guys and i do enjoy it i could not do two videos a week i would struggle immensely to do a video a week i've been really rethinking my whole upload schedule recently and i'm probably going to keep doing once a month and then if i feel like that extra push that month to do another video then I'm going to do another video because I'm like, all right, I'm in the mood. I got this. Let's go. Let's, let's make some stuff happen. Let's do some awesome things here. And I have to be in that mood to do that. And when I get home at, you know, 10 o'clock at night, you, you Monday, just, you just Tuesday, Wednesday. 
Yeah. yeah. I definitely feel it's... that. There have been times where, like, I just don't feel it. Like, I know I should be filming a video, but I just don't have any motivation at all. But that's basically it's, it's, the question. It's not a bad thing. It's just if I can continue trying to do once a month, I'm struggling with once a month right now. It's hard for me to find inspiration. I have a lot of ideas, but for me to actually get them from paper to, you know, videos in real life, it's hard to do. Um, I've scrapped multiple videos before, and that's no secret. Any YouTuber has and probably will always end up scrapping at least one video. Yeah. Um, so, again, it just comes down to if I feel like it. That's really all I have to say about it. But yeah, not much more to it. Next question: What is your favorite modded blaster? Oh. And oh, I'm going no. to I'm going to help you out here and just condense it down to the blasters that you happen to have right now. Is because if you get into like the the super psychotic mods that people have done outside of your own home, then it's like this is a question you will have to think for a week about before you can even fathom an answer. This is a question I already have to think for a week about right now. I mean, right okay, well, here. Uh, okay. So, uh, no, no, I, I do have an answer to this, though. Okay, let's go. I was going to say you can stop, and then we'll come back to this at the end of the video. No, no, no. I do have an answer to it, and this is because it. I have two answers. My uh, favorite, just in terms of sentimental value, and my favorite in terms of actual use. In terms of sentimental value... Project Patriot, Absolutely. a very old plaster. This thing's actually pushing about two years old now, and it has been serving and me well. It, it is still just as fun as it was back in the day. I mean, when I uh, used it, it wasn't even working at its full capacity, and I had an absolute no. blast playing with that thing. It has served me in multiple, multiple HVZs. It has taken out hundreds of zombies and a a lot of people, because uh, I've used it in PvP. In terms of actual use to this day in my loadout still, well, that's a pretty simple answer. Oh, good lord. Bring it out. Bring out the nugget pistol. There he is. Project Freelancer. Yep. This pistol has two... Oh, well, actually, I think it's closer to like 250 now. 250 zombie kills. This is my sidearm, not my primary. So, and it's not even that my blaster fails a bunch of times. My primaries don't fail. It's the fact that I just want to use this thing. This thing shoots 110 FPS with short darts in it. And it's very smooth. Like, it's all buttered oh, yeah. up. It's it's like, it's it, the internals are all smoothed out. The cylinder does it justice. That it, The cylinder is actually just as functional as the original hammer shot cylinder. I obviously wouldn't know what that's like because I have my own similar project in the works and this cylinder is <laughs> giving me lots and lots of pain. But whenever this thing gets done, I will do a full video on that. Oh. But don't worry. Oh, I almost fell. <laughs> you okay? Almost fell. No, I know. I almost fell. Okay. <laughs> okay. Relax. Don't, but fall yeah, off, don't fall off the pizza earth. Everybody knows the world is flat. It's all the other planets are round, but Earth is a freaking pizza that's flying through space like a frisbee. But yes, that is my favorite, uh, still to this use, uh, blaster. I will eventually get Project Patriots cage swap, and I'll update you guys on that when that happens. Yeah. But right now, I have other things I'm working on that you'll see eventually. Yeah. We're already almost 15 minutes in, and we're just getting started with the list, so let's get to the next question. What is a blaster that you really wish that you had? Ooh. Just... Hands down? Yeah. Easy. Uh, the Poonbow by Frank Cooper. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure everyone and their mom and their dad and their nan and their cat wishes they had one of those, if possible. It's, it's not even just because Coop made it. It's because of the flywheel cage in there which is a dr snickers cage those are very hard to find nowadays he put, a, he put a drs cage in it oh my gosh i didn't even know that 
I didn't even know that. It's been so long since I saw the video on that thing. The last time I saw it, I knew nothing about any mod community. <laughs> so like, yeah. Oh my god, it's and it's it's still like it's a nice blaster. I've seen it. It's it cool. looks pretty. It looks nice. Well, I like the paint. It is very nice. It does. Maybe someday, like maybe someday we'll be able to build another one, and then that'll be maybe someday. That'll be like maybe maybe you and I can collab to try and make one, and then every few months we'll ship it to each other's houses so that we each get a turn with it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'd build two. We'd have to build two because we'd I would have, have to build. have one. Oh yeah, I would have to have one if. <laughs> if I, I went through all that trouble and I, I didn't get to actually play with it, I would go insane. Uh, yeah. Oh, easily. Hmm? I said, oh, easily. Yeah. Um, what other hobbies are you into other than Nerf? Um, I have a few other hobbies. Um, I'm, I'm very into history. I like history. Knowing history is very important, in my opinion. I like history. Mm. It's nice to know what uh, our country started from. And you know where we are today. I I do occasionally paint like just blasters for fun. Me too. Me too. Shell I, work is always fun to do. Hell, um, I actually have a few examples still over here. If you guys haven't seen the Guazinator, this is uh, Guazinator. It's just a it's just a paint up of the Scavenger and then the uh, the Pyrocitor Vapid, Rapid Strike. Took me a while to actually name it. This isn't my favorite work, but I actually do like the way that it looks. I just I want to add some more to it. But yeah, pretty simple question, but that's pretty much all. It's not a bad question though. I mean. Yeah, the next one is a really weird one. I'm not even sure how to phrase it. Who is Phase? Like, like, who is Phase? Like, are you playing a character? as yourself or are is you are you like is phase like a persona that you have or something like that i don't know what it means i'm just writing what was on the list as a very that's weird uh worded very weirdly i know um, i know it was worded very weirdly <laughs> how do i explain this uh so phase uh i when i am nerfing i do go by the name of phase because i just do I don't care, and it's, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, the name was not just kind of chosen out of the hat. It was given to me uh, by a few of my friends, uh, Ashley, Jessica, and a few other people of Outcast. And it was given to me because I was a, I was a new modder. So I go, right, you're phase one right now. I'm like, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. So it kind of just stemmed from there. Is Faze a character necessarily? Uh, no and yes at the same time. There are aspects where you'll see in my videos like I'm... Uh, and there'll be certain things I'll do in videos. I don't really know how to explain it. I, I know what much. you mean. Like It's kind of the same with me. Like Tessera is obviously a big snake character, but it's also kind of a persona that I play when I'm filming. I tend to exaggerate my thoughts and feelings a bit more throughout the videos just to make them louder or funnier or stuff like that. And just so that, like, my content doesn't get drab or boring. And, um, like... Okay, so you're a step ahead of me, then. You obviously know that how I am in real life. I don't know... I do. I don't know if you would... <laughs> Say that I am like I am in the videos or not, but I'd say it's pretty accurate. I mean, obviously, to a certain degree, you're like you're you're a different person to a certain degree, but that's because you're looking at someone else through a screen. There's a difference between me and someone in real life, and yeah. uh, I mean, you know, looking at someone on a screen. Uh, yeah, you so. probably remember how tired I was. <laughs> <laughs> um. Here's a question that oh, yeah. I think is kind of personal, but I'm still including it anyway. Is there okay. any potential for you to quit the nerfing hobby in the uh, in the foreseeable future? Like, like not really talking about way later Ooh. on, because obviously everybody's got to quit eventually. But like, I'd say within the next like four or five years, something reasonable. That is 
That's that's interesting. Yeah. And I I know why people have been asking. I have seen comments like this. And I was like, okay, yeah, I don't know. Um, a straightforward answer, no. I don't think I ever will leave a hobby. Now, will I ever stop creating content? If I really get busy in life, like I started to you know, get married, have a family, whatever, way down the line, then yeah, obviously I'd stop creating content for you guys. Or I'd just really create like very few videos every year. Um, but you guys would still get content. So it'd be one of those yeah. two. Uh, in terms of just leaving the Nerf hobby in general, no, that's never going to happen. I love the Nerf hobby. I love the blasters. I am so sorry I keep cutting you off. I was just going to say, I don't think I'll ever leave too. I've taken breaks from the hobby, but I always end up back here again. Like, even if I lose interest for a while, the interest comes back, like, within a year. So, like, at the most, if I completely lose interest from the hobby, you will stop seeing videos on my channel based around Nerf Blasters for a year tops. <laughs> and then I'll go back to yelling about Nerf Blasters. And I feel like the same will happen for you. I feel like there are going to be times where you just, like, the, the hobby wears you out because it is a very active hobby. It's like when you're a part of it, it's very draining on your physical stamina and stuff like that, like running around reloading magazines and shooting all day long. Um, but, like, yeah. I'm, more, I'm more like, you know, like, just the idea of taking a plastic gun and shooting it at a target. It's super fun, though eventually oh, yeah. it does get kind of, eh, yeah, I did this yesterday. It's the same thing. I want a break. I want to talk about something else. I but, totally agree. I mean, yeah. Um, the next one is also interesting. What is your favorite game? It shouldn't take long for you to answer. Favorite game? Yep. Uh, Fallout 4. That is my favorite game of all time. I want to play it. Uh, from... From what I've heard about it, I really want to play it. I just haven't gotten around to it because I've just been busy with other things. Um, on a similar note, if you have any PlayStation console past the PlayStation 1, please, please, please take a look at the Jack and Daxter trilogy. Oh, that's why you were telling me about that. That is my favorite game. I don't think anything will ever be more fun than Jack and Daxter for me. It, it probably won't be your favorite game just because different no, interests and stuff like that but the games are so fun especially the second one the second one is so fun but it's really big freaking hard so prepare prepare yourself oh the first time i beat that game was a very wonderful day the next question is hilarious and i'm very excited to hear your answer <laughs> Oh no, I don't want to answer. What is the worst nerf war you've ever been to? Oh god. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear your answer. As you've been to a lot of wars, I haven't been to anything. Mhm. Mm okay. <laughs> Vietnam war flashbacks are flashing through his head. And he's trying to contain his I'm going to try to condense this as much as I can because but I'm going to try leaving all the important parts to this. Good cuz we're on a time clock. <laughs> okay. So, first off, it was a really boring war for a big majority of it. It was an HVZ, but we were given such a large area that we had so many people spread out. It was damn near impossible for you to get close enough with any to anyone without, you know, having a higher FPS blaster than we were allowed to have. Um, oh, no. So, like, are you seriously telling me they put you with 120 FPS blasters on something like an airsoft field? No, the airsoft fields are small enough for you to actually justify those. But even then, I mean, like, we were put in, like... Like a football it was around, stadium sized field. It, it, was about, it was about three acres worth of land that we had. But there was, like, 20 people. 20 people?! And I have four acres. I know how big that is. And then you say 20 people. What the hell? <laughs> so we're just all sitting back there. And, like, I like, you know, I'm I'm always enjoying it towards running towards zombies and picking them off. But I it was just, it was so boring. 
the highlight of the day, and this is not even a highlight, it was really a thing that disturbed the crap out of a lot of us um, and gave us insight on a lot of, you know, and ignoring all stereotypes. The elitist, uh, this guy was more of an elitist. Oh, no. He had a woozy, and he was... Oh, you told was, me about this. Yeah, you know why I'm going with this. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a woozy two-stage, I think it was, 150 FPS, and he just dumped mags into this kid, and yeah. we were... I've never been so furious. Yeah. Um, you like, other people started mag dumping the dude, and we all just yeah. told the guy to leave, because we were done with that crap. Like, the woozy hits really hard, and it shoots really fast. That's what any viewer watching this video needs to know about it. It shoots very hard and is painful to be hit by and it shoots super fast like it empties mags in less than a second so it's one of those things and you, you told me that he shot this this kid point blank with it and just like kept mag dumping him or something like that it was a, it was essentially mag dump at maybe five feet and even then five. we usually try to stay bang bang because we just don't want you to get hit that close we do shoot at five feet, but we don't we don't encourage it if you can avoid it and you know someone's way too close to you, just don't even try. Yeah. It's like I do my best not to do that because when we do wars in this house it's CQB, obviously. But like I try to stay far away from my targets so that if I do shoot you like in a spot where it's like more sensitive, it won't actually hurt like like, it'll obviously pinch because anytime you get shot by a Nerf Blaster, it pinches a little bit. But, like, it won't actually hurt and leave yeah. welts on your body. Uh, yeah. Anything else you like to break to this up into multiple parts. This is great. Nah, mate. Nah, mate. We're doing this all together. You can't stop me. If, we, if you have to do multiple parts for your channel, just pause the recording and then start recording again. <laughs> I'll do both That's... parts at the same time. Uh, I'm burping. Anyway, continue on. That was so loud. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. <laughs> here's here's an Noise equally, on too. Here's an equally hilarious one. What is the worst blaster you've ever used? We both know the answer to this one, and I can't wait for you to, to tell the audience about this this glorious mind expanding experience that you got to enjoy out of this thing. <laughs> He knows exactly why. Yeah, I do. The audience <laughs> deserves to know. <laughs> they deserve to know. <laughs> I, so, before I did the long shot angry review, there was a review I posted. It was on the warden. It w never went public. It was unlisted. And it got restricted. <laughs> oh my god. Because I had, I, and I, I, I did go back and recount this because I had I knew that this was probably going to come up. Two hundred and fifty-one swear words that were bleeped out in there, and that's within the consecutive of or uh, the the consistent or however you want to say it, whatever word is I Throughout don't remember. Throughout the video, just Throughout like the video in a row. within a span of about three minutes, uh, I said about two hundred and fifty whatever words. <laughs> uh. YouTube restricted the video. Yep. Uh, and then took down the video. Oh no, I took down the video. Um, but it was restricted. It was age restricted. My, I got age restricted before. Uh, now that you aren't telling the audience the real juice of this bird. If the warden sucks, right? He got it and it broke, right? Nah, mate, nah, mate. That's not even the worst part. He didn't break a warden. He broke six. Six of them. I did break six. Six. Five of them on the first prime. The first slide backwards. May as well just made like the Johnny Test whip crack sound effect. <laughs> you hold it. Whoosh, gone. <laughs> Oh, I like, did. And it then there's hurt. This, then there's this one, like the diamond in the rough. You got one shot out of it. That is. I got like, one. 
God. That is what you call the worst quality control I've ever seen out of Hasbro. Even the Alpha Strike garbage, at least technically works you'd never want to use it but if you put a dart in it you prime it and you pull the trigger it, it's not gonna break firing the dart no it won't but it's like i was i was not in a good mood that's for sure i can um, i can tell i can tell just like by your description i mean like the reason why it happens is because the rough cut mechanism was already so sensitive to where, like, when they cheaped out on the parts, it just became unbearable for its own payload. And, like, I wouldn't even have a problem with it. If it broke, whatever, because I could open it and fix it. Right? Oh, but why would you want to do that? You could just buy a new one. <sighs> has broke. Oh, yeah. Hasbro, we need to make a video just talking about how stupid Elite 2.0's launch was. Like, a full-on video, because there's no way to condense that into, like, a two-minute segment or anything. That I don't want to get your channel taken down. <laughs> no, we'll do that video another time. And don't worry. If, one if, day. If it becomes too ridiculous, then I'll edit everything. <laughs> well, one day we will do it. Yeah. Um, continuing forwards, though... What are your thoughts on the future of the hobby and, to an extent, just, like, the Nerf brand? Because the Nerf brand isn't doing very well at the moment. I'm, I'm not sure how you think that's going to go for. I kind of added that in, but it's similar, so I'm just adding this onto the question. That is a very interesting question. Um... Like, what I'm thinking here is, like, do you think that half darts are going to completely take over and every YouTube video on any Nerf branded blaster is just going to be more complaints about the fact that they're still using full lengths? <laughs> but I know that's not, like, I, what the original question is. Obviously, the future of a hobby is definitely within 3D printing, I think. And that's kind of a sad thing, but it's a bittersweet thing on the it's very sweet that's all it is well um, as 3d printing goes on and gets more advanced it's going to just like get higher quality and we'll be able to eventually get blasters that are as strong as injection molded blasters using 3d printed mechanisms at least i think so so long as you don't buy a like 50 dollar printer off of some guy on the side of the road who barely knows english <laughs> yeah i mean in terms of the hobby and Nerf as a brand, I really do think Nerf has a chance to bounce back here. But I've said it before, and I still stand by this to a degree. Um, and that degree being, if I see a blaster I like, I will buy it. Otherwise, not a single dime has gone towards any of Hasbro's products or anything I've bought recently because it's all been sourced secondhand from either... Uh, yeah. friends of mine from ebay or um reddit wherever it might be from or i've had people who've offered to send me stuff and for reviews because i didn't have the blaster um stuff like the uh the, the strife and uh yeah. my mark ii i need to do a 2. 10 second rant here for a second one of the um, biggest problems that hasbro has is the fact that they will take a concept that's perfectly fine and put a problem in it for no reason like the storm charge in my opinion a blaster that was super ridiculously close to being a worthy successor to the strife i could see a million mod kits being made for that like in an instant as soon as release Easily. and then they clipped the they clipped the grip on why did they do that? The rest of the blaster isn't clipped. And on top of that, they give you an extra slap in the face by making it so you have to file down the mag well to make it fit 18 magazines, which made it not mag drop anymore once I was done with it. So, just a bit of a rant there, but yeah, I really, I really wish they'd stop doing that. Anyway, back to you. This is your video. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a unnecessary thing. Um, and you know it's can only do so much honestly and that's 
Hasbro has a chance to bounce back here. We'll see what happens within the upcoming months, and we'll see what they've done. Um, I do have a little bit of hope left, and I think they do have a chance to do something amazing. Now, what th what they choose to do is going to obviously, if a lot of people are going to be kind of just, oh, do we really want to do this? Do we really want to buy this? Yada, yada. It's like, yeah. and I don't blame them. There because are we are so sick of coming out. Sorry. I was going to say, there are a few blasters that are coming out that are really hitting hard, like, like not physically hitting hard, but hitting a big chunk of the audience. I think the double punch is one of those. It doesn't appeal to everybody, but it appeals to a lot of people. Cause it that's, does. Uh, it's a nice I, blaster. It is the first oh, yeah. genuinely nice blaster I've seen them release since the Moto Blitz, and even then the Moto Blitz was mid because the design was dumb and it was still made with thin plastic. This thing, from everything I've heard of, is made with very thick plastic like they used to and works super reliably and just super well and just super smooth and, like, they actually went all out with it and that has me super excited and I keep going to Walmart waiting for it to show up and it still hasn't showed up. <laughs> no, I, I get what you are saying. Yeah. And it's... But, yeah, it, there is hope. Um, yeah. Dart Zone's doing well for themselves, obviously. Definitely. We X should shots. probably move on. We should probably yes. move on because we're getting a bit uh, sidetracked. Sure. All right, sure. Anyway. Next one. Um, we're getting closer yes. to the end of the list, so. Yeah. Okay. What I'm are scared. the plans for your channel in the future? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I need to wipe my nose. Future content and future, you know, just plans in general. I have more collabs that I plan on doing. Um, I plan on meeting up with some more friends in real life. Mm -hmm. um, which, uh, if you guys don't know, me and Tessera met up in real life, which was amazing. Hence why we did do. the Straven video and the Swordfish video. That was just because... Yeah, that was not green screen. That was... I was actually there. Um, yeah, um... I would have done a vlog, but short. I genuinely forgot to. <laughs> I forgot to film any vlog footage. So uh, when, when you actually like showed up and the visit was almost done, I realized, oh no, I haven't filmed any vlog footage. Oh well, I got two reviews out of it. <laughs> which your, your Straven review is actually doing better than mine, which is fair enough because you do have more. The Straven review is hilarious. <laughs> I love Oh, it's that. great. Hmm. It was great. But yeah, um, I have more plans for in real life content uh, in terms of meeting out with fellow Outcast members like Tesla. He's part of the Outcast. He's subscribed. Uh, which, speaking of subscribed, you guys should subscribe, like the video, turn on post notifications so you guys never miss another video. This when is I going on my channel too. Oh, well, also subscribe to Tesla no! and uh, turn on post notifications and like the video. So you guys, oh my again, gosh. Make sure you don't miss the video. Stop talking. I'm going to talk over you. You don't get to say that. <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, I do have future plans, and um, if I, I did have a question from just a friend of mine who was like, well, what if you get monetized? If I get monetized, that's great. I'm not going full-time, though, on... Yeah, uh, same here. I don't plan on person. doing YouTube full-time. I'm oh, getting tired. But if I do get monetized, that will just be like an extra bonus for whatever I make on my regular job. I still don't have a job. I want to get one, but... That's gonna be like future me's problem to deal with. I'll figure that out later. If I get monetized, all of it would be going towards paying off whatever I need to pay off, or if I have bills or rent or whatever, pay that off, and then what's left over is gonna be put back into the channel, whether it be video equipment, uh, blasters, whatever it might be. So stuff would be put back into the channel a little bit more frequently, if that makes sense. Yeah. This next question is just, <laughs> someone asks, where do you live? <laughs> I don't know if you want to answer that. If you don't, and I'll just mark it as completed. We can move on. That is great. Um, There's actually not, two not... of them. There's where do you live and what country do you live in? Okay, let's start with where do I live. I live in Omaha, Nebraska. That's all you're getting from me. If you guys ever see me, come say hi. I'm a nice guy. I'm not going to hurt you. 
Um, I'd love to say hi to you guys. You guys are awesome. The fact that uh, your content is so bad that you feel the need to say I'm not gonna hurt you to anybody who wants to see you. <laughs> I'm so sorry I, I had to you make that joke. If I did make that I joke, want... I would have been upset that I didn't make it for the rest of the evening. Don't never find your body. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Someone save me, please. He's gonna come back and shoot me with more darts. Um, wait. Legitimately, I but, never yeah. said this on my channel, but when he came here, like, he spent half of his trip pelting me with darts for no reason. Like, I'm just sitting here, he comes in with my rapid strike and starts shooting me. Yeah. I guess that's I'm, the I'm answer gonna... to the question, then. Yeah. Okay, uh-oh. Oh. Forgot what did to do now. Ad block turned on. Okay. What is the nice. worst modification that you've done? For example, what is the mod that you are the least proud of out of all of them? I don't like saying... I don't like saying I'm not proud of them. They've all been warning experiences, if anything. So I can't say necessarily what we proud of. I think the one that I'm more upset about is my... Mm. You're what? I had two AccuTroopers that broke, and I just, instead of keeping any of the parts or anything relevant to them, I just chucked them out in anger a few years back. You'd better product, do something interesting with the one I'm sending you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. If it breaks, it breaks. Uh, if it breaks, mm. then then keep it for parts or send it back or do something. <laughs> breaks, it breaks. Oh. I, I don't care. Just like, it doesn't really matter. It's your blaster. You can do whatever. Yeah, um, but yeah, so that's, and, and, you know, again, it was a learning experience, it was, you shouldn't dry fire a blaster with an air restrictor removed, stuff like that, you know, you yeah. just run these little things here and there, but those are probably the ones that I'm more pissed about, and probably one of my worst mods, um, yeah, um, there. here's one that, kind of just like an obvious question will you be going to end war next year yes i i do indeed have plans on going to end war and i plan on uh having a few people to meet up with there and if you guys are going and you guys are watching my, this video you guys are going you know freaking meet up with me and we will take our little squad and go slay some zombies like i'm down for it you know Yep. It's a fun event. It's a really cool experience to get. And if you guys haven't been, I've been, I went up until 2019 or 2018. I can't remember which one it was. One of those two. And the but, next time you go, I want to try to go as well. If it's in a sort of localized area, like uh, either within like, either within driving distance, like not too far away, or if it's just like, on the other side of the country and we happen to have the money for it to where we can just like fly out there for a weekend or something oh, yeah. um it's gonna be an absolute pain in the ass having to do uh get my blasters out there but i'll try to get them out there and by then i'll have my rig fully set up as well as some other things yeah no i'm, I'm like i said and war is a great experience everyone should go and try it at least once and if you don't like it, that's fine, but still try to get the experience. Yeah. Um, we're coming down to the last four questions. Oh, How dear do you God. know so much about tactical gear and firearm stuff? <laughs> that's what it says. Uh, oh, I was kind of hoping I wouldn't talk about this, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it because I don't care too much. Talk about it, Dan! Uh, I shoot guns. I train with firearms, I know how to use firearms. No, I'm not in the military. No, I don't plan on doing anything bad. It's just I respect well, the right can, to own a uh, firearm. Anybody can shoot and play with guns like a passion. It's just like you have to know how to do it and not accidentally yeah. kill somebody. 
I, I target shoot, I do three gun, stuff like that, and it's been really fun. And that's where a lot of my knowledge in terms of uh, how actual guns work uh, comes from. And then in terms of tactical gear comes from my Condor rig is uh, <laughs> made up partially because I do use it for firearms training. It's That's part of the reason I have it. Um, and I will continue to use it for firearm training. You don't have to agree with that, but that's whatever. Yeah. That just reminds me of the that one time where Coop did an April Fool's video where he pulls out his Glock and he's just like, why bother shooting Nerf guns when we can just put bullets into one another? Just go pew, 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 and kill each other. That sounds like an awesome weekend hobby, bro. Well, a lot of people don't know is that Airsoft gun was actually an AR-15. Oh my goodness, it was? <laughs> Did he just, like, put so an orange muzzle on it or something? Because it did have an orange muzzle. Oh, wow. The oh, airs he did. The airsoft gun that I have on... The airsoft gun that I used in the supervisor video is actually an airsoft gun. I got it a long time ago. And I, and I wanted to actually do, like, a nerf review on that. I wanted to do a review on that for the 500 subscriber special. And then it broke! Like, it actually broke right after I finished filming the supervisor video. <laughs> Because That's it has a selector switch. Pretty much the same kind of selector switch as you would see on the regulator, except it was just off, full auto, and semi-auto. And it was like a three-point selector switch. And it just got too loose, and it went boing, and it springed out. And we can't put it back in. We can't get the blaster open. It's like, get it, get into the internals and put it back in. We're going to oh. have to take it to, like, an airsoft repair place or something like that to have it looked at. But in the state that it's in right now, I can't unsafety it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That was a $350 yeah, no. uh, toy. $350 no, blaster. A... It was expensive. And that's that... not cheap. Yeah. And it really sucks. So, yeah, just in case any of you are wondering about that thing, if you saw that video, that's what the deal is. Um, the next question is the one where I have been begging to find an answer to for months. Okay. Why okay. do you oh. say 14 so much in Tessera's streams? That's actually what it says. I don't believe you. No, I'm being serious. I don't believe you. Go look at the list. It says... Why do you say 14 so much in Tessera's streams? That's what it says. Someone asked. Oh, oh my god, that's <laughs> great. I love that. No! Person. I if want an answer. Why do you torture my stream so much by saying 14 in the chat? Hang on a sec, wait a minute. This person, if you comment down below, I'm pinning your comment and just, you're freaking awesome. So, it's mainly just because it pisses you off. That's the full-hearted reason why. Why did you and start then? Think... Because you didn't know that it pissed me off when you started, but now you do because you say that. Why did well, you because start? you said you watched Skeppy and I've seen his videos before. You could you know, have chosen any of the memes. Any of the hundreds of memes that have emerged from his channel and chosen uh -huh. that to be there. You chose 14. Why 14? It's... I mean, it's a good number. No, it isn't. It's a stupid number. I thought I like it. It's a good number. I don't like it. <laughs> it has been the source oh. of torture. You could have chosen F or ping spoofing or I was testing or or any of those. But no, you uh, chose... Japanese symbol for beginner? You could have chosen that as well. No, you chose freaking 14. You literally chose 14 of any of those. And you, you spam my stream with it. I had to put up with some guy putting so many freaking 14s in the chat that I had to mute him throughout the entire stream. He kept that spamming them! Well. The, the guy who did that, comment down below. I also want to pin your comment. No, do not pin his comment. He was like, his name was like Mr. The Roach or something like that. I, I don't know. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was all just to kind of screw around with you. And that's the same thing with the Japanese symbol for beginner. You They're never did the Japanese not... symbol for beginner, but please don't. <laughs> I have to put I up with the things. I think I have done it once. This. I did it once, I'm pretty sure. Once. Okay, let's let's move on to the last one. We got two more questions right. left. We got the last one that's actually on the list, and then the last one that I put in. What is your favorite okay. stock blaster? 
from any company? My favorite stock blaster, <clears throat> Alpha Trooper. It is the Alpha Trooper because I can <coughs> shoot them really quick. They're not terrible. Or um. It's not terrible. It's not gimmicky. It's comfortable. It works well. It shoots well. It's a good size. I mean, the Alpha Trooper is... Yeah. It's like one of the most perfect blasters that Nerf ever put out. Like, I think the Alpha Trooper, the Strife, and the Rapid Strike are like the holy trinity of Nerf blasters. Oh, easily. And I mean, unmodded, the Strife is great. But even then, I still need the strike to have like all the locks removed, and yeah, even without the like, Accu Trooper, I'm gonna remove all the locks because. I never you, removed the locks from my Alpha Trooper. I did a slight spring upgrade, no, but that was it, and I was happy with the Alpha Trooper as it was. I thought that blaster is just fine. I mean, I'm gonna take the AR out. I'm gonna remove all mechanical and uh, like all mechanical locks, and just I must have electronic locks because I'm so used to modding electrical blasters. Um, yeah. and then, you know, just rotate everything, but stock blasters, I don't really use as often as I do with modded, and even when I use stock blasters, I'll use my very lightly modded Strife, which is getting about mid-80s to low-90s, and that's running off of Duracell optimal batteries, and yeah. thermistor remove, and, you know, rewire, that's it. Um, there is one more question, and this is the one that I put in. What do you think was the golden year for Nerf? Whether Ooh, you consider that's... it as uh, just the whole hobby or the Nerf brand. Because if anything, it was Nerf that started this. I mean, it obviously was, but what, what do you think? I think in terms of the retail side of things, 2016... 17 and 18 were big years for Nerf. Oh, yeah. Modulus and Nerf Elite were out. Mega was... Uh, no, Mega was out by that time. Mega started and, in, like, 2012, I think. Or 2013. But, like, I'd definitely say yeah. 2016, 17, and 18 were, like, the best years for Mega. We got the Mastodon, which was a huge leap oh, yeah. for the Mega series. We got the, uh, the Twin Shock, which was another huge leap. And we got the... Uh, we got the Thunderhawk. Everybody loves that blaster. But in all seriousness, though, <laughs> yeah. It no, was a um, in, in terms of a hobby, um, call me old school in the comments. I don't care. But this is just my tr uh, the, the truth for me. Oh, I hate saying I hate saying it. Like, uh, but this is just my opinion. That, that's what I'm looking for, opinion. Um, integrations were a huge deal. So I definitely think it was the 2014, 15, 16, and up years. I think integrations kind of just died off in 2018 and up. Uh, yeah. And that, and that that's kind of sad to see, but I understand why. If um, anything, it's like 2015 would have been like, the quote-unquote golden year for nerf because that's where like everything was in its prime according to you right it, it prime for it was in its prime in terms of integrations in the modding community um and nerf was actually yes. like putting out fun interesting blasters that i still think are relevant to this day even if some of them are a bit outdated like, the Modulus oh, yeah. ECS-10, say what you want about it, it was a pretty good idea when it came out. It was like, hey, you guys like attachments. Have a blaster all about the attachments. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Modulus was a great series. Definitely. Um, I miss it. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't. I do miss it, but... I think that Nerf is, like, putting out some Modulus stuff as time goes on. It's just they don't announce it and it's all like amazon exclusives and stuff like that but like definitely some of the best blasters i think were in the modulus series i, I just want to kind of add something here i think the modulus series itself was just like so awesome like that was like the coolest oh, yeah. series i've seen out of nerf it is my favorite series modulus is my favorite series and yeah 
I think that's just because, like, there were some bad apples. I mean, the original Battle Scout was just a complete disaster and a half. The Ion Fire is kind of useless, especially if you don't cut off the top thing that it has. And, uh... What yeah. the heck was the other one? The Recon 2? When that thing came out, it was just like, You couldn't put mags in it, so... Yeah, it was just kind of a train wreck when it came out. Uh, but then they came out with the Tri-Strike, and the Mediator, and the Regulator, and the and the Strife, and the Long Strike, and the, uh, the Demolisher. They came out with those again. They came out with the Recon 3, which already fixed the problem the Recon 2 had, and is quite possibly the best like new retaliator that you can get nowadays because from what i've heard they've added extra lubricant to the internals and it comes with some really good attachments like the uh the regulator stock and the little suppressor barrel thing that you can get um they also add some groundbreaking attachments like the chrono barrel it is gimmicky but it does technically work i mean it's obviously not the best kind of chronograph because it only has one beam break detector instead of two like a real chronograph but that was just because it was designed only to be used with full length darts so they pre-calculated the length of a full length dart so you wouldn't have to worry about variation if you shot about out of a full length blaster then you would get pretty accurate results and the zoom scope it's pretty it's pretty debatable whether or not that thing is good but considering like for what it's worth it's a toy attachment that you put onto the scope of a Nerf blaster, and what's more fun, having a plastic tube with, with like, maybe a plastic crosshair on it, or, like, a camera thing that can switch to night vision and can zoom in, even if the zoom is fake, it's, like, it's cool, it makes you feel like a kid when you're using it, it makes you feel like James Bond. I love the zoom scope, I'm glad I bought one. And, like, the, even then, they came out with some other attachments, like... I think the Modulus Strike and Defend Kit was absolutely amazing. The Mediator attachments are also amazing. The Mediator Barrel is a little bit underwhelming, but the Mediator Stock was definitely cool. It was the first competently sized Nerf Stock. The uh, Some of the other little things that they came out with, like the Storage Shield, it's kind of like hit or miss with that, but I think it was alright. But yeah. I love Modulus. I... I already did a series about Modulus, so I'm going to shut up now. Fair enough. What um, do you want to do to close out this video? We've gone through all the questions. I I just want to say, first and foremost, uh, thank you guys for your support. You guys love the likes, the views, everything. You guys are awesome. It should feel awesome. Keep doing what you guys are doing and keep supporting my work. I do appreciate it. Um, I did want to. I I had this last minute. I did want to answer this because I've gotten a lot of questions about this. Do I ever ask for money or Patreon or anything like that? My answer is no. I think it's cool that some people are able to do that. I don't need to take money from my advance, but that's just me. Exactly. Um, and I, that's the last minute thing I just wanted to throw in there because I had a few people ask and I just don't want to. Kind of me too. With all that said, though, thanks for watching. Thank uh, you. Thank yes, you for tuning and... into this first episode of Tessera's Neon Knights. And um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Give me suggestions in the comments for what else you would like me to do in this series. And if you'd like me to continue with this series or do new things with it or something like that. I am actually going to do Neon Knights as a series from now on. And the episodes are going to be kind of few and far between. But I'm going to try and put a lot of effort into them. But with that said, yeah. Give your outro. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one. Remember, as always, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't. They are my opinions. Thanks for watching. Bye.